Hi, welcome to Multi-Currency Management in Dynamics NAV. In this module, we'll look at multi-currency, which is a relatively important function for most companies. So multi-currency means, of course, working with foreign currencies. You would use multi-currency if you buy or sell in other countries besides your local currency, or you record general ledger transactions in both your local currency and an additional reporting currency. And in order to do this, we need to set up currencies, which we can do by creating currency cards and specifying currency exchange rates. And once we've done that, we can assign them to customers, vendors, and bank accounts. So let's have a look in Dynamics NAB at how we can do all of this. And let's start with the general ledger setup. I'll search for the general ledger setup using the search function. You can enter a currency code on the general journal line and post the line to a general ledger account. The relevant exchange rate is used to convert the amount to local currency before it's posted to the general ledger account. You cannot link different currency codes to the general ledger accounts because amounts on the general ledger accounts are in your local currency. For a demo company, Cronus Canada, this is Canadian dollars. But the Canadian dollar isn't listed as a currency. So if I were to go to the currencies table, You will see here that the Canadian dollar isn't listed as a currency. You can leave each currency code field blank if you're working in your local currency. So let's look at the Euro as an example. As you can see, we have unrealized and realized exchange rate differences. These are linked to the realized gains foreign exchange account and the unrealized gains foreign exchange accounts. To manage currencies that do not use decimals and to avoid unnecessary decimals in foreign currencies, you can use two different rounding features, unit amount rounding and amount rounding. These features can operate independently or in combination. In addition, the features can operate in connection with invoice rounding. As opposed to the invoice rounding features, the amount rounding and unit amount rounding features affect only amounts in foreign currencies, not the corresponding amounts in local currencies. These two features will not result in any posting to the general ledger accounts. So in the amount decimal place field, you can see that it's 2, 2, which means a minimum of 2 and a maximum of 2. These are similar parameters that you can specify for the local currency and the general ledger setup. Because Cronus is a demo company, it has quite a lot of currencies. But in your system, you might not have as many currencies listed. So that's how you would initially set up your currency card. You are able to manually enter exchange rates if you click exchange rates in the ribbon. This window specifies how you want to register exchange rates for foreign currencies and to specify from which dates the exchange rates are valid. For example, you can enter daily exchange rates, monthly exchange rates, or quarterly exchange rates for each foreign currency. The date in the starting date field determines when the exchange rate comes into effect. When you post a foreign currency transaction, the system uses a posting date on the invoice or journal line and the information in the currency exchange rate table to find the relevant exchange rate. The following example shows you how you can enter an exchange rate amount in the currency exchange rate window. Note that the blank field on the relational currency code indicates your local currency. The adjustment exchange rate for Canadian dollars to euros is defined as 1.49 local currency, which is Canadian, for one euro. The system uses the information in the currency exchange rate window to calculate the adjustment exchange rate. If you post in an additional reporting currency, the system also uses this table to find the appropriate exchange rate to calculate additional currency amounts on GL entries. In order to post exchange rates, gains, and losses, you must run the adjustment exchange rate batch job and register the adjustment exchange rates that will be used by the batch job. You can also update the exchange rate automatically by using the internet. If you're using foreign currencies quite a lot and you want to update them quite frequently, you can save a lot of time by doing this automatically. This is based on an exchange rate service. I'll show you how to create a currency exchange rate service and link it to Yahoo. So you click on exchange rate services in the ribbon. I have already created it, but I'll show you the step-by-step -step process that I had to go through. So first I gave it a code name and then I wrote a description. 
The service URL specifies if the currency exchange rate service is enabled. Only one service can be enabled at a time. We will provide you with a Yahoo API like this. You can also fill out the service provider information and the terms of service link. The source section specifies the X path to the XML node that should be mapped to the field specified in the caption field. So I'm gonna show you which fields map to what fields. So I'm gonna start off with the parent node for currency code. I mapped it to the rate field. The currency code field I mapped, I mapped to the ID field, so this field. The starting date field was mapped to the date field. The exchange rate amount field is mapped to the rate field. For the relational exchange rate amount, I set the default value to one. This field specifies a value that will be used if a currency exchange rate service does not provide a value. And the transformation rule section specifies a rule for transforming imported text to a supported value before it can be mapped to a specific field. By choosing preview, you can see how the currency exchange rate table would look if you updated it with the defined setup. Note that this data will not update the exchange rate services in the system. This is just for preview purposes. So once you're done, don't forget to enable the exchange rate. Once you enable, you will get a question regarding a job queue entry has been created. I've clicked no because I do not need to see the job queue entries windows right now. So I'm back in my currency window. And if I click on update exchange rate services, As you can see, the date changed and it's now updated with the latest rates from Yahoo. If I were to go back to exchange rate services, back to the Yahoo one, and clicked on job queue entry, you can change these settings as desired. So once we've set up currencies in Microsoft Dynamics Snap, we can assign them to customer vendors and bank accounts. So if I have a customer working in foreign currencies, which would also like to be invoiced in their currency, if I go to a specific customer card, in the foreign trade section, I can assign a currency code. The field is currently blank, so this tells me that the customer operates in my currency. I can do the same for vendors, of course. If I go to a vendor, also in the foreign trade section, you can see that this vendor operates in Euro. So when I receive an invoice from this vendor, it will be a Euro invoice. And by assigning the currency code to the vendor card, the system will use this as a default. It also works the same for bank accounts. We can have bank accounts in foreign currencies. And Cronus Canada, for example, has a bank account that operates in Euro. By clicking on the bank account, you can see in the posting section that you can assign currency codes. Now, by doing this, you, can, you will also typically see that the balance and the balance local currency will be different. So Cronus Canada has 9,347 Euro in this bank account, which is $13,920.94 Canadian at the current exchange rate. And this concludes multi-currency management in Dynamics Nav. Thanks for watching.